Big shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to start your own website. Thank you, Squarespace. You can improve the sound of your system for free? Yes, you can. I'm gonna talk about seven different ways that we can make our systems sound better for the low, low price of free. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about how to make your system sound awesome for no money at all. Tone Generator, they're free. You can look them up on the Google machine, your computer, you can use Safari. Anyway, the one that I use has a slider. So you can start it at 60 Hertz and then rev it up to 500 Hertz and leave it there if you want to. The reason why I like these is because I used to have a resonance in one of my speakers in the office and I didn't know what was going on. Every time a male would hit kind of an upper mid-range note or higher note, there would be crazy resonance and it was distracting. Obviously, it didn't sound great. So I got on the computer and I started moving that slider back and forth and sure enough, I got to a frequency where I heard that resonance. And then I did a little detective work. You know what it was? It turned out it was a loose banana plug speaker binding post. I just screwed that in. Guess what? The resonance went away. Now. There's probably resonances going on that I can't particularly hear by ear, but that one was really obnoxious. So it was a way that I found an issue. There are other things you can do with a tone generator. You can also go on YouTube. So 500 Hertz tone, just write in whatever frequency and tone generator. But if you're just getting started, you may not know what frequencies you need to even test. That's why I like the one that has a slider. If you're going through the frequency and you have one specific frequency, all of a sudden jump forward or pull back. It's another thing. We're going to talk about that later. Thank you so much to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest and in most cases cheapest way to start your own website. You can get it up and running in a few hours, really a few minutes if you want to. Everything that you want to do with a website, Squarespace can do. You want to do e-commerce, which means sell stuff. Want to sell some coffee mugs online? Squarespace has you covered. How about sending out a newsletter to get more people into your business? Squarespace has you covered. What about domains? I want to get alscrazytapemeasures.com. Well, Squarespace has you covered, unless alscrazytapemeasures.com is already taken, but you can see if it has .net, .org. Reserve domains, build your website, it's easy with Squarespace. So go to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man to get 10% off your first purchase. Everything is drag and drop. Everything is easy. Squarespace has their own support videos that will walk you through the steps of creating your own website. If you're not familiar with how to do an email campaign, how to set up your store, your web store, they got you covered. It's easy. It's awesome. So go to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man to get 10% off your first order. Thank you, Squarespace. <laughs> Okay, this is a big one. It's a big one. So big, in fact, that I need to take a drink of coffee. One moment. Speaker placement. Speaker placement. Oh my goodness. This is a big one. Now, I'm no expert on speaker placement. However, I can move them around my house and say, hey, I like this one better. I like the position of this one better. So if you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, there are other videos out there like lots loud speaker optimization something something from new record day my buddy ron over there so go check that video out maybe i'll link it right here but for me i like to be a little bit more pragmatic about it i don't necessarily need to break out the measuring tape or the laser level i just kind of move stuff around until it sounds good so if you have your speakers and you have a little bit of room to play then play around with them first leave them where they're at and then start to change their toe-in. Toe-in simply means if this is the speaker and it's facing you, well then you toe it in like this or you toe it out or you just put it straight out into the room. A lot of times high frequencies can be mitigated, changed, accentuated depending upon where that speaker is pointing at you. Also, you can play around with height and if you want to kind of calm down those treble frequencies, you get your ear either above it or below it, but not right on the same level. However, the prevailing thought process is that you always want the tweeters at ear level. And that's great. In theory, in a perfect situation, 
that is the way you want it to be. Mess with toe in. Then you can start messing with how far the speaker is from the wall. I would start off maybe 18 inches, two feet from the wall. I know, oh my goodness. You gotta have your speaker pulled out all the way in the room. No, you don't. I don't believe that you do because, well, I don't have that option in my house because I have children. But what you can do is you can start moving yourself forward and aft. And once you get closer to the speakers than an equilateral triangle, a lot of times the soundstage and imaging gets crazy big. Equilateral triangle means if I'm eight feet from my speakers, those speakers should be eight feet apart. That's the perfect case scenario. And it's not even always the perfect case scenario because you can start to break that rule. So my point is start to do things one at a time. Start to move things around. Start with toe in. Once you get that figured out, then you can start moving them closer or further away from the wall. Then you can start moving yourself. And it might not be feasible to rearrange the living room furniture. However, if you find that I am a specific amount of distance from these speakers and they sound good, you can kind of split the difference where you can move forward a little bit, maybe in your chair, maybe pull the speakers out a little bit. And if you move your head back and forth a lot, you're gonna hear bass, nulls, or more bass in specific areas. So depending upon what sound you like, you can put yourself where there's a bass peak or you can put yourself where there's a bass trough. Anyway, it's a free way. Mess around with your speakers. Do some more research. Go watch Ron's video. I think you'll be surprised just how different you can get your system of sound by simply moving your speakers around. Plug the ports. That's right. Most speakers, some speakers, a lot of speakers, have ports. Plug them. Get some socks. Hopefully clean ones. Get a diaper. Hopefully an unused diaper. Roll it up and stick it in the port. And just listen to see how it sounds. I know most people, most of the time, want, hey, I have a port because it makes this speaker extend further in the bass frequencies. I get it. If you have a subwoofer though, maybe you don't need that port. Maybe you don't need that speaker to go very low anyway. So plug the port, give it a chance. A lot of times we have bass issues in our room. It's very difficult to say bass issues. A lot of times we have bass issues in our room. So plugging the port's gonna kinda clean that up or at least Take one variable off the table, and it might be better. And guess what? It takes about three seconds, maybe 10, to take some socks, put it in there, sit back, and listen. Huh, do I like this better, or do I not like it better? But it's free, and it can be probably done in less than five minutes. You may like it. If you're new here, consider subscribing, and please like this video if you got any value. I do this for a living, so it means a lot to me and the channel if you subscribe and like the video. Thank you so much. Isolating your speakers. Let's give a for instance. In my living room, I usually have speakers sitting on, on the side, flanking my receiver and some ferns. Between two speakers are two ferns. Mind blown. Anyway, they sit on a console and that's not really the best way to do things. You should never have a speaker kind of sitting on top of something that can resonate. So what I usually do is use, well, my speakers are on right now, some isoacoustics. They're isolation stands. They're expensive. You don't have to get those if you don't want to. You can play around with, I don't know, little rubber feet. You can play around with little furniture discs that you kind of put under maybe a plate so it doesn't scratch up your table or something like that. I know this isn't necessarily free, close to free when you think in the grand scheme of things about how much hi-fi it costs. So, Isolate your speakers from the console. A lot of people even isolate their speakers from the speaker stands. So if you don't have anything between your speakers and your stands or your speakers and your console or your speakers and your bookshelf, then I would encourage you to get something. Fold up a t-shirt, put it under there and listen. Sit back and listen and see if you hear a difference. If you do, then you can think about getting something a little bit more expensive. Spend $5 on some furniture bumpers. And I think I know in my experience, it has improved the sound of my system. Use the balance knob. That's right. Most, some, a lot of my components have what's called a balance knob. It's usually on an integrated amp or on a preamp. It's not on everything anymore. Back in the day, was it Wednesday? I don't know. Back in the day, most receivers had a balance knob. What a balance knob is used for is to either increase the levels from one speaker. 
In practice, this is useful when you're in a room and you're having a hard time with center imaging. Upstairs, I have one side of the room is where two walls meet. So it goes like this. The other side of my room is completely open. It's the walkway. So I have one side of the room during this and the other one pretty much just hanging out in nothingness. So I use the balance to kind of get a little bit more energy going in my right speaker, a little bit less energy going in my left speaker, so it balances things out, i.e. the balance knob. Very few people talk about the balance knob anymore. It was there for a reason 30, 40, 50 years ago, and it's there for a reason today. So don't feel like you have to do everything by placement or what have you. Go ahead and use the tools available to you, like the balance knob. See if you can get your center image back in a room that's not ideal. Use tone controls and EQ. Now, this might not be free for everybody. If you have a Wii Mini Streamer, I don't know where it went. If you have a Wii Mini Streamer, it does come with a 10-band graphic equalizer. Here it is. Today's video is not sponsored by Wii, but you sh should still check out Wii. Actually, I don't know when this video is going up, but they're on sale for $78. It's pretty cheap. Anyway, Weem has a 10-band equalizer. A lot of integrated amps have tone controls. Most AVR receivers have an equalizer. It gets a little bit difficult and it gets a little bit intimidating. However, we can use a free download, a free app on our phone. I use Decibel X and I still use the free version, so there's always pop-up ads. Anyway, with Decibel X, there is a real-time analyzer. So when you're listening to something, it will tell you what frequency that is. So if there's something in your music that's like, oh man, that's pretty harsh, or mm, I wish this was louder, you can turn that on, keep repeating the same part in the track, and then figure out what frequency. And then, armed with that knowledge, you can go into your equalizer and start bringing things up or bringing things down. You can also do this with the tone generator, which I was talking about earlier. This is a little bit harder to do because you're just kind of listening to but that tone comes forward or drops back very quickly in comparison to the surrounding frequencies, you may want to use a little EQ to cut that down or boost something up. This isn't perfect, but if you have access to an EQ either digitally or through the analog domain, you can start messing around with that. Don't just start messing around with it, though, haphazardly, unless you know what you're doing. Run an RTI, listen to your favorite songs, and then try to pick out places where you wish that song sounded a bit different, and then mess with it, and then listen again. In some cases, it's free, especially if you have a Wii, or an AVR that has an EQ. And you can also try to use tone controls to get it a little bit tweaked. Or you can go buy an EQ, because an EQ is generally not, it's not free, but it's generally a lot more affordable than a lot of other changes in your system. Hang some towels. I see this all the time in the comments. The room's the most important thing. Is it? I don't think so. The room, the room, the room. I get room treatments work. And I get, that is probably something I could look into a little bit more in depth. But I've talked to some of my patrons, like Mark, who is a genius. I love Mark. Guess what he says? Hang some towels. Now, what one can do is take some thick towels and start tacking them up places in your room, not permanently, but just to see if it helps out. So I would start at what's called the first reflection point. Pretty easy. Take a mirror slide it down the side of your wall. And then when you can see the speaker from your listening position, that's the first reflection point. Take a big old thick towel, put it up there, and then listen again. If it calms things down a bit, consider hanging some curtains there, if there's a window, or building a little frame, putting your thick towel in there. There's a whole bunch of DIY ways to build room treatment without spending a ton of money. And you don't have to have some type of expert come into your room. Hang some towels. Usually you can probably just put it over something. Give it a listen. If it improves the sound, then go to Home Depot. Get them to cut some wood for you. Pop a towel in there. Slap on a coat of paint. Bob's your uncle. You got your own homemade DIY room treatment. It goes beyond that, but that's a place to start for free. Because most people own towels. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to link the best of or my awards videos 
right here and here. If you want to support the channel, you can become a patron, use the affiliate links, or sign up for Amazon Tidal or Rune. Thank you so much. Don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe using one of these free methods, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.